Greetings, Mark Cooley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yah's Laws and Commandments. The last time we got together, we were talking about and we proposed the question, is Christianity pagan? And we definitely went through that and we definitely came with the conclusion that it was invented uh, the word Christian, Christianity, which is not a biblical term, we saw that in the scriptures that the translators removed the original meaning, which, which was messianic, and changed it to the word Christian in the three verses that are in the scriptures in Acts 11, Acts 26, and 1 Peter 4. But when you go to the original language, it says that they were messianic and Peter actually um, said that if you are going to suffer by following Messiah now in the English translations it says by following Christ now why would a Jew meaning Peter have used the word Christ which did not exist yet well actually it did because it referred to pagan idols Sun God idols. That's what Christ, the Greek word is Christos, and that's where they get Christ. That they refer to all the idols in Egypt, all the sun deities as Christ. And so, why would a Hebrew, meaning Peter, have referred to the Hebrew Messiah with a Greek name? He wouldn't have. So, it was translated inaccurately so we found out that there is no biblical stance for the word christian or christianity in the <clears throat> scriptures it is all from pagan rome sun god agendas to try to deceive man into accepting and following their agenda and that is to exalt Baal, Satan, as the creator of the earth, and not Yah and Yahshua. So today, I wanted just to follow up on something, preferably it's short. But anyways, there is only one safe place to dwell. And that is in Yahweh's laws and commandments. Because both Judaism... And Christianity have been indoctrinated, infiltrated, penetrated with many uh, sun god traditions and customs that violate Yah's laws and commandments. And in Judaism, as well as in Christianity, there are a lot of man made laws or man made traditions, man made customs, things that we think is biblical, that the rabbis came up with and people began to receive them even in Yahshua's day. And this is when he dealt with this in Mark chapter 7 and in Matthew chapter 23. And he refuted, he rebuked, he came against the, the rabbis' teachings that they added to the Torah to get people to think that things like washing your hands were part of Torah, were part of Yah's laws and commandments, and they were not. That was just, that's this one law that the rabbis came up with that was not, there's no, nothing in Torah. Now it makes common sense and, and for cleanness and health, that we would wash our hands before we'd eat, or we'd wash our hands. You know, one of the good things that COVID has brought out is it's gotten more people to be more uh, germ conscious. conscious, you know, with the sanitizing and washing your hands. I know at least for me it has, and most people that I know of it has. So anyways, there is part of Judaism, uh, the rabbis, 
they literally believe that if they come up with a law that Yah will actually submit to the rabbi's law and how stupid is that but you know people in Judaism people in Christianity we've accepted that same thing that if a pastor says you know you have to go to church in order to continue in your relationship with the Most High people accept that and that is not accurate you need to keep the Sabbath but now it's not going to church that's a whole nother teaching so the only safe place and this is what I want to encourage you in the only safe place because last time we saw that Yah's wrath and judgment is coming upon Babylon Babylon is you know at least threefold it is political it is economical and it is religious so we're just going to talk about the religious side of things that everything and you can read in Jeremiah 51 <clears throat> Isaiah 13 Psalm 137 and you can see that every mention of Babylon Babylon is going to be judged crushed and destroyed so the end result er, everything and anything that is connected to Babylon which includes humans which includes the religious system which includes a political system which includes an economic system it's all going to be wiped out and destroyed because it's not built on the Torah and so anything that is not built on what thus saith Yahweh on Yah's laws and commandments and the prophets and the Psalms is going to be destroyed remember Paul said everything that's wood hay and stubble is going to be burned up in the fire the only thing that's going to remain is that which is on a solid foundation and the only thing that is on a solid foundation is anything that you and I are doing and living according to what is written in the Torah for example when you keep the Shabbat that is written in the Torah so that's a solid foundation <clears throat> if you keep Sunday that's the day of the of the Sun gods that's going to be burnt up and destroyed another example is if you keep the feast that's on a solid foundation because that is in the Torah but if you keep pagan holidays like Halloween Christmas New Year's Easter so on and so forth all those things and the people that are keeping them if you read in the scriptures they will be burnt up and destroyed as well now that's not good news but the good news is Hosea 4 6 says my people perish for a lack of knowledge well hopefully after listening to this if you've had any lack of knowledge in these areas you're not going to have a lack of knowledge because you're going to obey Roman I mean not Romans Revelation 18:4 and come out of Babylon so that the sins and the plagues that are connected to Babylon will not have an effect on you. You're also going to obey all the other scriptures that talk about coming out of Babylon. I'd encourage you research and Google all the scriptures that the prophets are commanding Yah's people to come out of Babylon, to come out of paganism sun god worship sun god traditions and the doctrines of men and we're, well when we come out of it where are we to come into and that is into yah's laws and commandments it's all about yah's laws and commandments so that is good news okay um i'm just going over some notes here's uh, I've quoted those scriptures already. Babylon's going to be destroyed. So, we don't want to have any part to do with that. So, the only safe place, spiritually speaking, is to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Is to dwell in, live according 
to Yah's laws and commandments, to reject anything that is man-made. So if there is something written in the commandments, in the prophets, or something that Yahshua said, he said, if you continue in my word or in my laws and commandments, then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It started with the five books of the scriptures and then Yahshua said, if you continue in them. Same way, at the very, the, whenever the very last second of the last day is, if you're continuing in Yah's laws and commandments, in his Torah, then you'll be set free. You'll be set free from the plagues. You'll be set free from the judgments. You'll be set free from the lake of fire. You'll be set free. And you will spend eternity in Yah's kingdom. Now, here's another nugget that I wanted to share with you. So, focus in. My encouragement to you is to focus on Yah's laws and commandments. Ask yourself, is what I'm doing according to Yah's laws and commandments? Like, for example, we talked about the word Christian. We've all been indoctrinated that that was a biblical term, but it wasn't when we did our research. Same way in the term. Nowhere does the, the Joshua or Peter or Paul say, go to church. They kept the, the Sabbath, the Shabbat. It does say, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. But they never, they never went to church. Now, they went to the synagogue only for the purpose to rebuke and to reveal the truth of the Torah and to expose their misunderstandings by the rabbis and by the man-made traditions that the rabbis had. So, but there's nothing in the scripture that says to tithe. Now, here's one thing that a lot of people have a hard time with. It is from Genesis to Revelation, the principles of tithing or giving. You know, Paul talked about giving that in Macedonia, the Philippians were the only ones that gave unto him. We are to give unto the work of the kingdom. We are to give in support of those in need and of those in the body of Messiah. We are to do that. That's what our tithes and offerings are for. And if you're not part of an assembly that is doing that, then just do it on your own. Find people and ministries. You might be listening to teachings on YouTube or other podcasts that are supporting the kingdom. Well, sow financial seed into them because, one, it takes money to buy things to produce these videos and podcasts. Also, the minister needs, needs provision. Also, find those that are hurting financially, that are jobless, homeless. Find those that have need. Maybe um, we find people on the streets all the time that they're, they're asking for donations because their Social Security, they're retired. Their Social Security is not enough, and we know that's a problem. So we need to be led by Yah's Spirit to give unto people. See, that's biblical. That's commandments. But people are constantly looking for a way to get out of it instead of looking for a way to be a blessing. The blessing of Abraham is upon you and I so that we can be a blessing to the body. But anyways, here's my next nugget. The early believers were not following Judaism. Think about this. The early believers... The early assembly, they weren't following Judaism, and they definitely were not starting a new religion called Christianity. But they were just simply submitting to and obeying Yah's laws and commandments. And they were real simple-minded folks. They got together in homes. They had no churches. It wasn't until Constantine came along that churches were built, and they were built in honor of sun gods. 
And if you meet on Sunday and you meet in a building, you're, you're following the same principle. You are worshiping and keeping the day of the sun instead of the commandments which said, keep the seventh day Shabbat. Genesis 2 started it. And it continues all the way through eternity. It will be in the millennium. So just submit to it. Remember James 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore unto Yah. Resist the devil's temptations to follow sun gods, to follow sun god doctrines, to follow sun god patterns, to follow, you know, any form of Christianity or Judaism. But submit yourself to Yah's laws and commandments, resist the devil, and he will flee. And see, Satan uses both Judaism and Christianity. There's a little bit of truth in all of it. And that's how Hasatan deceives people. And we just accept it all. We get born from above. We have an experience with the Messiah. And then we go the only way we know to go. And that is Christianity or Judaism. And non-denominationalism is the same thing. It's, a, it's all the same. Nothing's changed. So the early believers, they just submitted to Yah's laws and commandments. They also submitted to, the disciples did, the apostles and those that heard the Messiah, listened to his teachings. They submitted to whatever Yahshua commanded them to do. He said to go into all the world and preach the Torah the good news, Yah's laws and commandments, and those that will be baptized in his name and continue in the gospel, they will lay hands on the sick, they will cast out demons, so on and so forth. Then it says, and they went everywhere, confirming the word, confirming the Torah. Yah and Yah's spirit confirmed the Torah with signs, wonders, and miracles following the preaching of the Torah preaching of Yah's laws and commandments. Matthew 5, 17, Yahshua said uh, concerning that he did not come to do away with Yah's laws and commandments or the prophets. He came to continue them. He came to establish them. He came to take them to another level. And so that is what the early church was about. And they were endued with supernatural power from on high. Signs, wonders, and miracles flowed. Loaves and fishes multiplied. The dead were resurrected. People were healed supernaturally. Crippled people were, were healed. Um, remember in Acts 3 that they came to the beautiful gate and this man was born crippled. And they said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. In the authority and power of Yahshua's name, rise up and walk. And he rose up and walked, and they said his name, Yahshua, and faith in his name, Yahshua, has made this man whole. And so signs, wonders, and miracles were done, and these people met in homes, maybe just a hand, I mean, their homes weren't big like our homes. Their homes were sometimes just the size of, a, of an average kitchen. And they would meet in those homes. They would sit facing each other, maybe 8, 10, 12, 15 people, whatever they could get into it. And they would discuss the Word. They would discuss the Torah. They would share testimonies, things that they saw, things that they were experiencing. That was their assembly. Now, some of them, like in Acts 16, they met down at the river. And Paul, and I believe Silas, uh, came and joined them, and they, they had fellowship. See, that's the gathering we're not to forsake, gathering with one another. In today's world, we might, you might live in another state, and we have people in other states that connect with us, in, in, on the Shabbat when we have our, our, our service and we share the word. We, we give people ample time to, to testify, to share things, to add anything that, you know, whatever we're discussing, sharing, teaching, to uh, imp, 
input. Now, most people aren't used to that. Most people are just used to one person speaking. But you need to jump in and share whatever Yah might be doing in your life or things you might be seeing, understanding the prophetic. Maybe you've had a dream or vision or the scripture revealed something to you, so on and so forth. So, miracles, signs and wonders flowed and it confirmed the Torah. And the early believers, the early assembly, the first believers in Yahshua ministered with the same power that Yahshua ministered. Why? Acts 1.8. And they will be endued with power from on high. Supernatural, dunamis, miracle working power. Yahshua told them not to go anywhere until they received this power. And once the day of Shavuot came, they were endued with this power. And they went about and they began to minister signs, wonders, and miracles. They began to heal the sick, cast out demons, um, provide for the poor. People that had things sold the, their substance, their homes, their lands, brought and gave the money to the apostles, and the apostles distributed it to those in need. Hallelujah. And that's what the early believers were about. That's what, and that's where we can find our safety, our refuge. It's not in Judaism. It's not in Christianity. It is not in going to church. But it is in Yah. It is in Yahshua. It is in obeying his laws and commandments, whatever they are. You will never be rejected. You will never be rebuked. The enemy will find no open doors to your armor when you obey Yah's laws and commandments. When you keep his Shabbat, so on and so forth, you will have a peace. You will have deliverance like you've never had before. Many people in the church world are pressing in and all they talk about is they need to be delivered and they got problems with these demons and this demons and yet they're not obeying Yah's laws and commandments. They're not taught to obey Yah's laws and commandments. If you just kept the Shabbat and you started there, Great peace. And when you have great peace, that shuts out the demonic world. The demonic world is real. But when you obey Yah's laws and commandments, when you come out of Babylon, when you make your decision, I'm going to follow Yahweh. Just like Joshua said, as far as me and my house, he was talking about the sun gods of Egypt, and he's talking to Israel, but he says, as far as me and my house, we're not going to serve the sun gods. We're not going to serve Babylon. We're going to serve the Most High. We're going to serve Yah. We're going to serve Yahshua. We're going to serve His laws and commandments. We're not going to follow the patterns and the doctrines and man-made things of Judaism or Christianity or the sun god traditions that they are involved in, but we are going to serve Yah's laws and commandments. So I want to encourage you. It may be lonely at first. It may be feeling weird and difficult when you step out of the boat of Judaism and Christianity and sun god traditions and customs and holidays and worship to follow and to obey the word that Yahshua gave Peter in Matthew 14 when Yahshua said, if that's you, Messiah, bid me to come and to walk to you on the water. And Yahshua responded, come. Come out of Babylon. 
come out of Ju Judaism, come out of Christianity, come out of Babylon, come out of pagan sun god holidays, come out of it all and come into Yah's laws and commandments. Come into the way. Come into being messianic. Come into being set apart and being a set apart ones empowered by a set apart spirit to live according to the set apart Torah. So Father, we just thank you for this word of encouragement. And I pray that you would take this word and minister this word to your people. And that those that are still trapped in Babylon, those that are still trapped in their minds and in their heart, in Judaism and in Christianity and any other false religion, we pray that those who have a heart for you, that you would open their eyes and that you would give them the faith like you gave Peter to step out of the boat and to come into Yahshua, to come into Yah and his laws and commandments. And Father, we pray your mercy upon our nation. We pray your mercy upon the world that has, that has been so indoctrinated into paganism, into the doctrines of sun, God, pagan worship, that you would forgive them and that you would rebuke these sun god traditions and destroy them and that you would set the captives free and that you would fill people's hearts with your spirit and that we would be bold enough to step out in faith and just obey your laws and commandments and that you would lead us across other brothers and sisters to connect with other assemblies to connect with other men and women that are anointed of you to connect with and that we would support one another in prayer with fellowship with friendship and also in any form of giving and receiving that we would support your kingdom that we would not be focused on me myself and I but on your laws your commandments and supporting your people. So, Father, we just worship you for this teaching. We thank you, Father, for it as we receive it in Yeshua's name. Now, if you want to connect with us, you can connect with us at, at our uh, website, Yahweh, that's Y-A-H-W-E-H, Yahshua, Y-A-H-S-H-U-A, Assembly, Dot com, or you can find us on Facebook or other social media sites, Mark Pulley or Yahweh Yeshua Assembly as well. Until next time, may Yahweh bless you. May Yahweh make his face shine upon you. May Yahweh give you peace. May Yahweh make a way for you where there seems to be no way. And may all of us keep growing and increasing and multiplying in Yah's laws and commandments, in obeying them, in keeping them, in doing them, in living according the, to them, according to how he delivered them to Moses, and how Moses delivered them to Israel, and how Yahshua came to reestablish Yah's original covenant. Until next time, Shalom, Shalom.